Okay, everybody. Bucks County Bites here. We've got America's Original Outlaws, no. Mark McNutt, and Melissa Sanker will be calling in here in just a couple minutes. We did a, a preview call that uh, we needed to work out, but we are about to go live here with Mark McNutt from America's Original Outlaws, all about the Doan Gang here in Bucks County, here in Plumsteadville Township. There's going to be a lot of history discussed and a lot about the movie discussed. Hopefully they give a call back here in just a matter of 30 seconds. We gave it a shot before, but we've lost connection. So we're going to try it again. I'm going to give Melissa a call if she doesn't call me. But there is so much to be told about the series from America's original outlaws. I'm so excited to have these guys on here. This is an exclusive interview. They have never allowed anyone to talk to them about this. And an outlaw in possession of the greatest secret in American history. Okay, everybody, this is Bucks County Bites, and I have Melissa Sanker here. She is part of America's original outlaws. And we're going to call into Mark McNutt, who is the producer and the person that's responsible to have this TV series out there about the Doan Gang in Plumsteadville Township here in Bucks County. So here is Melissa. She's going to say hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, Martha. Thanks for having me. Oh, this is so exciting, Melissa, to have you. You'll be calling into Mark. And we'll get to we're gonna learn so much about the some of the history of the Dome Gang, what they're about, and then go into what the TV series that he's producing. We're gonna talk all about that. So go ahead and give Mark a call, and we will catch up with him. That sounds great. Okay, we'll get him on the line here. One moment. I know Mark's probably on a limited time basis with all the movies and the TV series and everything he's doing. I know, it, it's so true. And uh, it's it has been quite an interesting couple of months, but... Oh, it's we... been, I'm sure it has. I'm sure he could tell us all about what has happened over this uh, six months of crisis in the energy yeah, of business. <laughs> You end up with delays for sure. Oh, everything's delayed in that part. Okay, one moment. Okay. But I hope. She's well, um, all right, so now we have Martha oh, on the line. We have Mark. Oh. Hey, we have Hello. Mark on the line. Hey, Mark, it's Bucks County Bites. How are you today? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Oh, great. I'm so happy that you were able to have the time to, to talk to Bucks County because this is something that we've been waiting for so bad. This is like the mysterious, the Dome Gang. America's original outlaws the TV series there's so much tied up into this and it's it's such an uh, honor to have you on you and Melissa um, I don't even know where to begin um, when it comes when it comes to the Dome gang there's so much history here in this township so I want you the first thing I want you to do is introduce yourself okay I want you to tell us who you are and then Melissa can uh, chime in too. And then we'll talk a little bit about the domes before we get into the, the full production. Sure, well, first off, thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, I'm Mark McNutt, uh, grew up in Doylestown. Um, I am a filmmaker and artist, and uh, I'd been fascinated by the story of the of the, the Doan Gang and Doan Boys, uh, the Plumstead Cowboys, for oh gosh, um, close to forty years. Oh wow! 
you are you are a long term long time kind of like a follower of the story for a long time wow yeah no for sure but mostly you know um i really i, I i'm very interested in that in the you know the history of um Bucks County. Yes. Um, and also in you know the history of the American Revolution, I've always been very uh, fascinated by it, and uh, you know heard stories as, as you know a kid about sure. the Doan Gang and the treasure. And there was where I grew up in Doylestown. There was a big field behind us, and all these holes where someone had been digging. The rumor was people oh were going out there at night looking for the treasure. Wow, and that's going back when you were a kid. Yep. Wow. So probably, you know, sometime in the 70s. <laughs> Way back in the 70s. So they've probably been doing this, uh, they were looking for that, that that history, that story of the Dones. It's been here for a couple hundred years because that's just been fascinating everybody. Yeah. That's, that is amazing. So that's how it kind of got started. You got You got interested in this a long time ago when you were a kid. Yeah, that's true. So, um, um, I, you know, I was, I just would you hear the, the stories and the, the kids in the neighborhood talking about um, uh, older teenage boys out, you know, looking for the supposed treasure. Mm -hmm. And then later uh, in the 90s, uh, when I was involved professionally with, with music, there was a time when, um, you know, you're, you're working at, at night. So there's a lot of times during the day where you're not really doing too much. Right, right. Uh, and as as a hobby, I would go to the library and do research. So that's really where sort of the, the research begins for me sometime in the early... Oh, that's right. We had to go to the um, library. Around 90. <laughs> not like today. You could get to the library to find anything out versus yeah, that's right. phone, and, right? And I did it really just for the... The, the pleasure of it, honestly, and just took a lot of notes and didn't really think too much about, you know, I, I, I wasn't there because um, I had, you know, a vision or intention to either, you know, write something, a screenplay or a book or an mm -hmm. article. I was just going because I just really enjoyed it. And it was later, um, later in the 90s when I actually started uh, working professionally as a journalism, uh, as a journalist uh, and as a freelance writer. Um, that I thought, well, maybe there's a, there's an article here, you know, um, for you know a magazine or a history magazine or something, and and uh, you know maybe a screenplay, but I uh, didn't really you know get an opportunity to, to do much. But shortly thereafter, in early 2000s, I got married and had the kids, and like you know like life happens. Uh, other folks, yes. yeah, life happens. The next thing you know, right. years go by, and uh, about 2014. There was a uh, sort of a basically a lobbying event uh, in Harrisburg to support TV and film, uh, the TV and film industry in Pennsylvania, and I was asked to travel with my parents and um, a, an actor of the name of David Morse. Most people would know David. Uh, well, not even most people. But we might know him from Saint Elsewhere. Oh, okay. Yes, um, the same. That's the same the, guy from Saint Elsewhere. Yep, and you know the Green Mile is another one that people yeah. know him from. I love that movie. Um, and he he did a series in Philadelphia in the in the in the like I guess early to mid two thousands called Hack. And anyway, so you know this, I was asked to, to sort of drive you know the, my parents and David to Harrisburg mm -hmm. to um, for this event, and um, you know I just sort of chit chatting about the history. I know he was fairly new to the area, and. Um, I was just talking about the history of it, and part of the history of Bucks County is talking about the Dones, and I just started telling about it, and once sort of wrapped it up, he's like, oh, that's really crazy. Like, what are you doing with that? <laughs> I was like, I'm not, doing, I'm not doing anything with it. You know, I had already previously, right, right before this event happened, I had gone through sort of a two-year professional divorce oh. um, from um, a, a a creative and business partner of mine were working with a novelist uh, based in Boston to, uh, you know, write write the basic screenplay based on her no a novel, and the relationship kind of soured. Oh, no. And but but we didn't we didn't finalize a sort of a, an agreement to sort of officially separate for almost two years. It was crazy, and after that, I was just so burnt out and was very. Um, 
sort of not interested in the industry so much. So when I David said, why. what are you doing? That I wasn't, you know, I wasn't joking around. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing right. anything with it. But he did say, he's like, look, you know, it sounds like something I would be interested in. So, you know, maybe you should do something. So I came home and you know, told my wife, you know, about the day and then said to her, can you believe, by the way, you know, can you believe he, you know, he said, you know, you should, you know, maybe you should do something like that. Mm-hmm. And to my surprise, she said, well, maybe you should. Which is crazy. Because your wife, wife said, is, go for it? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, she, we've been together for so long. We've been together for almost 30 years. Wow. So she's she's been through all the, the earlier incarnations with the music and other sort of crazy, you know, um, pursuits. Um, so the fact that she was encouraging was, was man, and I, I told her, I said, honey, I don't think you realize <laughs> what you might be getting yourself into. Oh, goodness. <laughs> But she said, she's like, you know, all the stuff that you've done, you know, working with other people, and there's there's sort of, there's no shortage of kind of flaky folks in the entertainment business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all the rabbit holes you go into. Here's, here's a subject, here's a topic that you're genuinely passionate about, that you actually like, and you've done research on it, and you've worked on it. And you have a guy who's a respected actor who's already telling you up front before you do anything that he'd be that interested is, in being part of the thing. That's amazing. So, wow. and that's sort of where it, it began. So then I, you know, dusted off all the uh, the research I had done. So what year was that when the, all that was happening? Like when your wife said, go for it, let's do you know, do this. You're passionate about it. What, what year was that? It was about 2015. Okay. So I've been doing, putting this together for about five years. Okay. Wow. And it, it built sort of slowly at first. I wasn't sure if I was writing a screenplay, but then as I did more, I'm like, this is this it needs to be a television series because there's so much to get into. And the way I have sort of set the foundation for the, the narrative is basically to use the Dome Gang and their adventures and exploits as a vehicle um, by which I can tell other stories about the American Revolution that have never been you know, oh, I've never really been. You just told. made my hair stand up right now because it is fascinating what you're doing. You've got a part of history here, and you're you're making it actually out there for the public. You're doing a series on this, right? That's yes. And oh my gosh, Melissa, I'm so happy I found you guys. You know, oh, I'm I'm thrilled as well. I'm I, my I'm excitement. Speechless. I contain it. <laughs> very I'm trying yeah, I'm trying to, for this I'm just trying to I'm trying to keep quiet because I want to hear so much I want to hear everything because I've read so much and the reason mark that I got interested in the Dome gang um so first off I'll give you a little background I'm a Voorhees I'm a van Voorhees from the Drenthe region of the Netherlands the family came here in the same years that the Dones came here they lived right along the riverside of New Jersey. Okay, so it kind of started thinking about it. Like, I wonder if my family ever met their family. And or then, knew or had heard. Had heard, t- you know, what was going on with them. Yeah, their... it's kind of weird because the American Revolutionary thing, it really, we're interested in it. My family is because our farm was, we found tons of artifacts from the from the Revolutionary War in the fields. George Washington's troops stayed in our fields. Okay, and that's why when I found out about the Dome Gang, then I found out about you, and the American Revolutionary War ties into this. I just, I couldn't help myself. I needed to get you. I needed to talk to you. Because there's <laughs> that, it's just it kind of weird connection because you're doing the series. And my mm-hmm. sister and I, are really into that history well the the thing is you know and and i'm really very passionate about this because the way this time period is taught in school is pretty much the same way it's been taught you know mm-hmm. from, you know generations before us and it's this very simplified simplistic view that kind of goes like this you know there was a tea party Bunker Hill, <laughs> washington crossed the delaware betsy frost betsy ross made a flag and hey next thing you know we won and it was so much more complicated. Oh, it no. was so much more divisive. This idea that, you know, there was all these, you know, the unified great patriots, you know, rising up against the British is really not the way it was. It's, it's believed that, you know, about a third were solid patriots, about a third were solid loyalists, and the other third didn't know what to do. So um, it, 
it, it's a much more interesting story than than has been told in um, in our history books. That's and true. to me, there's something there's something. One of the things I'm trying to do with this narrative, mm -hmm. if you know, some asking what sort of uh, it, you know what's it about? Like it's easy to say, well, it's, it's you know about the Dome Gang, but it's not really about the Dome Gang. They're again, they're the vehicle mm -hmm. to tell all these really interesting stories. Um, the for example, the just the the general contentious relationship between the Quaker community and the rest of the population was was really serious. And I don't think I've ever really, I think I saw one program years ago on PBS that maybe mentioned it for about 20 minutes. Uh, but it was it was a pretty big uh, deal, a big deal, especially in Pennsylvania and, in, and especially in Bucks County. Oh, yeah. You know, Quaker, um, you know, the Quakers, that's the big thing, Quaker town. It is. It's a Quaker. Pennsylvania is. It's different. Bucks County. Um, it's not like the rest. You know, it just wasn't like the rest of the nation. You know, we are. We're different than the states of New Jersey and Delaware. We know, we we are a Quaker um, nation, really. You think about going back a couple hundred years ago, things were different. It is a big deal, and I'm I'm happy that you're telling this story. Go well, ahead. the the the. the... The, the murmuring tension throughout the narrative, throughout the episodes, and hopefully as we, we move, move beyond it and get into multiple seasons and stuff, is really this I, I, this sort of this concept of what what does it mean to be an American? Because I think we take for granted that you know this was a this was a, a new concept, and um, what the founding fathers and mothers were trying to do was really extraordinary. I mean, really extraordinary. Um, and I, I think there's so many important lessons from them that are, that are easily re reflective today. I think there, there's still that tension mm -hmm. in, in our country with what sort of the vision of what it means to be an American. And I think being able to, and again, you can't overdo it because then it, you know, then, but, but having some of those themes, you know, throughout the narrative and discussions, and dialogue, I think people will relate the same way that um mash the tv show mash right so what, what was mash oh mash was about you know doctors during the korean war mash really wasn't about that mash was really about what was going on in the country uh, at that time in the 1970s mm -hmm. but they were able to do things that were clever and interesting because it was a period piece in, in many ways and i think there's an opportunity here too um i think there's there's uh, stories about um women uh stories about um African Americans and American Indians. I, mean, I haven't seen, uh, other than maybe the last of the Mohicans, uh, which you know was supposed to be during the French and American, uh, right, sorry, right. the French and Indian War. Uh, you know, you wouldn't think there was any, you know, you know, American Indians living in in, in this area. No, it's no, true. A lot true. of them moved. It's true. You really oh, that's amazing. Work. It's true. Yeah, I mean, listen, I would you would say that you would agree with that too because you really didn't see anything of that. No, not at all. When you're, you know, you're, I think. Uh, to, to Mark's point about how history was taught in school as a very, um, I don't know, just, just basic, in, in such a basic way. I mean, all those things just went missing. Mm -hmm. It just went missing. And, and I remember being a kid in school and thinking, you know, just kind of feeling like, well, you know, we have this vague instruction that these people existed, but we know nothing. They, they, they taught nothing more about them, nothing more about the dynamic or how they felt at the time mm -hmm. uh, in these periods in, in history. Uh, we, we, we just heard very little about that. No, we didn't. You know, hear it, uh, and it was, it mm -hmm. was almost as if they didn't exist. It's like, you know, you, they told you in school vaguely that these groups existed, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be Quakers we didn't or know anything we, about them. We, no. And then everything else was just brushed over. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. That's what they did with these history books. We really didn't learn the real history of our country. You know, we, we were told what they wanted us to hear. Right? There's that as well. And then I know, so um, I'll let Mark speak to this, but I just had to, I just wanted to chime in and just say how, how true that that, you know, mm -hmm. to my experience, that has been as well. Mm -hmm. You know, just that you just, the, the various groups, you know, and the tension during the time period, it just was not discussed. No, no, it wasn't. No. Yeah, and, you know, it was a long war. It was it lasted for about 10 years. Yes. Um, and, you know, um, you know, just, I always get sort of um, 
emotional when you know the I don't know if you ever visited the the unknown uh, graves oh, um, yeah. at the, what they call the Upper Park at Washington's Crossing mm-hmm. uh, near the Thompson Neely House, and these were bodies that I, I and and don't take this as a gospel because I, I don't I don't know for sure, but I think. Uh, they weren't discovered until there was some work that was being done on the canal or some fixes to the canal. Oh, wow. And they came, ac- they came across the base of this mass grave. Oh, my gosh. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't wow. know that. Yeah, and so th- there's um, a set of, I don't know how many are there, maybe a, a dozen plus. Um, just They just found, and they, they think these were men who were part of Washington's army. Mm-hmm. who were either wounded or sick and who died while uh, Washington was encamped at Washington's Crossing. Um, and, you know, you know the story, that, you know, they, they, they crossed, they, you know, attacked Trenton and then went and did Princeton and then and then they hightailed it out of there. So they didn't have time to, you know, to... Yeah. I, I, there, there's, the, there's only one body that's been identified up there. It's one of the majors. And I think there was a record for it. So these were just kind of, you know, regular guys that their families probably never knew anything, whatever happened to them. Oh, my gosh. That's so... And these were people who were willing to make the sacrifice before the country existed. In 1776, we had a Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a country yet. We didn't have a constitution. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a flag. Yet we had an ideal that Mm -hmm. these, these people were willing to die for. And... I think that's a really important lesson when people get really caught up with um, what I'll say, sort of American um, U.S. sort of imagery and, and uh, with flags and stuff. Uh, you know, but, but before um, there was any consensus on a national flag as a symbol, there were people who were willing to die for something more than just symbolism. Oh, yeah. But there was something real and meaningful. Uh, and they saw the the importance of what they were doing as as you know a world history movement, which it, which okay. it was. Oh my gosh! And what and what did it mean to them? And what did it mean to them? And what was that ideal? And what does it mean to be an American? Mm-hmm. It's just, these are just things that what goes I mean, through your head right now. Like what you know? What did they? What did it mean back then? You think about that what was going through their heads you know they were fighting for something like we didn't have, like i said we didn't have a country we didn't have any you know what were they doing they were doing it for what did they believe in right so, yeah so th- that that more than anything has sort of is what kind of keeps me going with this because mm-hmm. <laughs> this project has been very very difficult it's it a has. long it's... project for you yes it's you know we basically have been a sort of a one man show putting this together. More recently, I've you know been fortunate to um, connect with people like Melissa, who are uh, very knowledgeable and also passionate about the history and have become huge helps. Um, so but... where, the question is, where does so Melissa? Where does Melissa come in? Is yeah. she helping with the management of this production? You're the you're the director and producer of this of this production right so i've where... helped out well as a oh sorry i'll let mark speak to that and i'll let you know um, okay. sort of some of the things i've been doing as well yeah well you know i think melissa started as just a, a fan you know oh, who came she, across the site she did. And reached out and said you know she was a doan descendant and we just started the oh, conversation so, okay so melissa you are you're a doan descendant i am oh my gosh so we have a real doan on our Bucks County Bites? They live. Wow. They live. Yeah. (laughs) It's true. Okay. Yes. Wow. So you became a fan and you're a descendant and you meet Mark who is working on this project, starting to getting into the project, I believe. That's probably You know, it's, yes. uh, Well, one night something just compelled me to search. You know, I, I grew up with the story of the gang, with the of the Doan gang, because it's um, your family. Yes. So, as a Doan, you'll find this is a whole other conversation. But you grow, you know, you grow up with a. This is just important. It, these are important stories that are passed down. So, like I said, from a young age, this this is a story that has been, uh, you know, or 
group of stories that has been taught to me. So grew up, became, you know, a bigger researcher into it. And, uh, you know, I had taken a break from the research for a while. Mm -hmm. Life happened. And one night I just I just felt compelled to just search do a Google search on, you know, just see what was out there, what would come up on Google. I don't yeah. think I had done too much with Google before that. You know, I grew, I grew up with the books, like the New Doan book, and, you know, and some of the historic books. But anyway, so it was one night I was Google searching, and I, like I said, I just felt compelled to Google search, and then the series, you know, news about the series came up. And I just, like, uh, like Mark said, I just, I became a fan right away. I was just a fan. <laughs> and uh, eventually, wow. eventually, uh, some like had uh, I spoke to Mark at some point, and then that's you know, and then the rest from went from there. Oh my gosh, that's just an uh, unbelievable connection. And then, so you kind of got involved with helping him out. Then um, some, we are doing research. Do you do research for Mark? Um, who does most of the research for the pot, like for this project? I mean, it takes a lot to put a movie, a TV series together. I mean, I can't imagine... Well, this imagine was definitely you. all done before I came on board. So I've helped with some of the um, sharing of information on social media. Oh, okay. and And, you know, just sort of... Uh, I, I mean, that's been one of the big things there. Wow. Yeah, as far as the... Um, um, some specific research that I did, other than the, what I have done on my own... Um, shortly after that, that um, you know, David Morse you know, encouraged me to, mm -hmm. to do something. The very first person I spoke to was um, uh, Terry McNeely, who is sort of recognized as the only sort of genuine uh, living Doan scholar. I uh, saw the book. I, I know that there's a book coming out, but it's not due out till 2022, if I'm correct. Yeah, I, in fact, I, I spoke with Terry uh, several weeks ago. I was like, "Where's your book?" Yeah, everybody's <laughs> <Everybody>. waiting. <laughs> I know, but so Terry and they're like, always waiting. Yeah, we it's, that's been a long wait. Years. It's so exciting. Yeah, but it's worth. Yeah, the because wait. when I met him five years ago, or so he was, you know, he was actively working on the book, and then and then other you know, people I've reached out to. There's. I can't imagine all the work that you're doing for this production because. I mean, you think about all the equipment that you have to have, all the people that are in the series, and the money that is responsible to put all this together, and then you had the pandemic come along and just slow everything down, almost probably completely come to a stop, I imagine. I just can't imagine the, the hurt that you were probably feeling because everybody stopped doing everything. Well, so to be clear, you know, we are still technically in what sort of consider sort of pre-production. Okay. So um, we have we we um, shot a bunch of stuff, um, uh, but we're in a phase where we're sort of building um, some new partnerships. Okay. That will uh, lead to you know getting that production fired up, and, and you're right. The during this pandemic no, nothing is really happening right, right i was supposed to i was supposed to have been part of a history channel uh oh. program um oh my gosh and they were going to shoot we were scheduled to shoot they were sending people out from los angeles oh, uh no. in april oh, no. uh, to do something about the dones and to do something about my project but they had to they had to they had to postpone it to July, and then when I finally heard from them in July, they postponed it again until probably November. And at this point, I don't know what's going to happen with it, but that was a definite disappointment. That's a because, very much um, a disappointment. I'm so sorry it, to hear that you all oh, that that happened to you. Oh my gosh. Well, especially because the the, the show is associated with the History Channel's you know mm -hmm. biggest show uh, out there. Um, it's. Um, so that was sort of disappointing because it would have been, um, uh, and still might be, uh, an opportunity to tell the story about about the Doan Gang. I just think it's such an important American story. It is. Uh, that, des that deserves to be told. And I'm looking forward to doing it in such a way in a, in a serial um, approach, series approach, where we can use it to tell uh, so many other in important stories that... Mm -hmm. 
I, you know, you know uh, I have yeah. a question for you. Um, so one of the things that I've read is about the, you know, going back into the 1700s, they believe that the Doan gang, the, you know, what are, they're the outlaws. They think that those outlaws, the Doan gang, started this where it actually, the stories went to the West Coast, out in the West, and that's where our original cowboys and outlaws came from. When you think about going back a long time ago, they, they are the original ones, and those stories were written and taken out as the people went and they settled. People traveled, you know, the, the gold rush and all that stuff going on. That's when you got those cowboys and outlaws out there. So do you think that they, the gang, I mean, thinking about they started back in this county, in this township, that went out to the West Coast and it started at, you know, back there, back in the 1800s? Well, I personally, it's a personal theory of mine uh, that I've looked into to a little bit, but certainly fascinating. I do believe that the stories of the Doan outlaws helped to sort of establish or frame what would later become the Western outlaw. Mm, that's what um, I was thinking too. Jesse James yes. and all of those stories. Of and when I was Butch a kid, Cassidy. I was actually taught that. I was actually as a, as a, you know, descendant as a child, I was taught that they were the frame, uh, that they were part of the framework. Of course, you know, this is a family teaching. This is not an official historic so teaching there, but we were we, family. Absolutely. We were taught that, you know, that they were, um, you know, predecessors of, uh, Jesse James and all the American outlaws that are oh, that's sometimes, yeah. Uh, so to go with that framework, I mean, so it's, it definitely, it's, it's amazing. Well, it's interesting too, you know, the, you know, those writers that would, you know, go out west and, and write those um, penny novels, right, about, mm -hmm. you know, the Wild West. They're all from Philly and New York and Boston. They're all East Coast people. Yeah, East Coast people. people. Um, and the, the, the first use of the term cowboy goes, you know, uh, well, at least in literature, goes to um, James Fenimore Cooper his book, The Spy, which is a sort of a spy novel that takes place during the American Revolution. Of course, that's one of the mm. things the Jones were said to have been amazing. And a part yeah, of. It is amazing. But it, yeah, they were, they were it, quite the spies. But it gets even more interesting when you learn that Fenimore, uh, um, that, that Cooper's family were prominent Quakers. Oh, that's even from, more. In, wow. That's wow, from, very interesting. Fascinating. Right across the, they were like Burlington, New Jersey. Oh, really? So, so if they're Quakers, if he's grown up with a Quaker, dur during that time, during the American Revolution, I have no doubt that he heard stories about the Doan Gang. What's so interesting is that a lot of what, when I first started the, the, the project and research, you know, stories of them either being spies or stories of them, um, you know, being up to no good with, you know, stuff related to sort of occult type uh, things. And was you know was always told me that oh that stuff was just added later. There's really nothing mm -hmm. to that. Uh, mm -hmm. No one even really knew who they were. It's kind of, they kind of made a comparison to uh, what's his face, uh, Paul Revere, mm -hmm. who nobody knew until until uh, Longfellow did uh, his poem. Um, but it turns out that that's not true. When when Abraham and and Levi were were executed, there were it, it was covered in the newspapers. Yes, it so was. people most certainly knew who, who these guys were. Um, and, uh, you know, the, you could, I think an interesting question is why, um, they're not maybe more well known. Uh, someone like Terry McNeely just thinks because they're associated with the losing side. And, oh, um, is that why they think it's, it's not known because it was, a, it's a losing side situation. It's, it's almost as if it, it was, I mean, I can't say it was intentional, but it was almost if it was somewhat covered up as a hmm. story of you know of the revolution like it's an they early american quiet. story they didn't want it they didn't want it out there they didn't want it known. right it's it's been kept a little more quiet than some stories hmm. well no, you know, and real. that's probably true you know because you know, again gr you know growing up it was you know i used to assume that everybody you know everyone was was a proud patriot and, and fighting but it wasn't quite mm -hmm. like that so if you have these guys with a notorious um reputation who were you know tories or at least believed to be spying for the, the British, stealing horses and selling them to the British. Mm -hmm. 
and, you know, stories of violence, and they come from uh, a Quaker like community, I could absolutely see that being very, very sort of embarrassing and something that people oh. wouldn't want to talk about. Yeah, yeah let's not so. pass this down. Let's not talk about that. They were also called the brigands of the revolution. Yeah, you I know, saw that. I read that, too. Yeah. Interesting fact. It is. It's very interesting history. And, and to know all this is all coming out now, and you know, because it's now available, everybody can read it. You know, got Terry's book that's going to be coming out. You got your series. That's really going. To, that's really going to make a huge difference out there. For people who are going to see this. America is going to see this. The world is going to see this. Yeah, I get emails every week from people all over the place saying, "When's it coming out? When can I see it?" <laughs> I bet you have and a huge following because... of people. They, you know, people that are fascinated with this and they know it. Especially you've got the Doan family and. We've got the ancestors from the Dones, and they're they're waiting. They want this. They want this out there, and they, they probably can't wait. They're probably so <laughs> like when Mark, <laughs> why why can't you go faster? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, I was the the Doan Family Association, mm -hmm. which is a combination of American, you know, U.S. and Canadian Doneses. Okay. It. Uh, have a, a, a sort of a every two year family reunion to get together. Oh, wow. so where, where did they do that at? Did they do that here? I think here? it's a fish. No, well, they, they have in the past. They, they've they've done it here. Uh, apparently, in the nineties, a few times they they did a whole big bus tour where all the Doneses got together and got on, you know, um, rented buses and you know drove around to the various locations. Oh my gosh! Uh, but. But this one was gonna was supposed to have been out at Doan University. I just in... drove past. No, I just I drove past it. I was gonna. Oh, you did? I was gonna call Melissa. Crete, Nebraska, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna wow. call. I was gonna call Melissa, and I thought I'm gonna call Mark. I just passed Doan University. Wait a minute. We're, we're doing a podcast on the Doans. And was this that on whole purpose? Thing. No, it just happened by accident. Funny. Because I was in Nebraska and I was visiting all these things. I'm like, wait. There's the Pony Express. Well, I need to find those aviation concrete markers because it had to do with air mail, and that's how pilots, they drop the mail. And then all of a sudden, I came across the Doan University. I'm like, wait a minute. That wasn't supposed to happen. But I was just, like, kind of on this trail of finding things out about our history. That's it was amazing. so fascinating. I'm like, wait a minute. I, I almost called you. <laughs> but it was, it was not a good time. It was late. <laughs> I was not going to call you and wake you up. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you know, I, they had scheduled me to come out and do a presentation at Doan uh, University? as part of the reunion. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the Doan University was going to host for the Family Association, the Doan Family Association, uh, and invited me to come out hmm. and do a presentation. And unfortunately, because of COVID, yeah. it had to be had to be canceled or postponed. I think they're going to try oh to do gosh. it again next year. But I can't wait. That's one of the other things I did when I started this. It was really, really important to me. It's not my family, and um, no relation at all. It's just a no. I mean, my, I'm second generation Irish American. We don't we don't show up here <laughs> till uh, much later. Um, okay. So, but, but in addition to Terry, I, I reached out to the Family Association um, early on, and I've, um, I've been um, corresponding with them all throughout this. Um, and they've been uh, big supporters and, and helpers. Uh, I interviewed John Doan, who's the current secretary. Uh, I think he's the secretary or the, one of the guys on the family board, um, part of um, mm -hmm. part of the, the documentary. And um, it's been great. I hear from uh, Doan's uh, descendants too. I got an email a couple wow. weeks ago from a guy in Sweden. Oh my God! Uh, in Sweden. Yeah, and, and you know, saying how his his wife was a Doan descendant and they were from Canada. I've heard from, you know, Canadians. There's a, a Canadian journalist named Holly Doan, um, who's, uh, you know, she'll, you know, pop in on the, the Facebook and, and get involved. And I've had conversations with her. So oh my gosh, you it's, are been, such, it's been a great experience. You're such a big name. People are, yeah. And you know, they're finding more out about this and you're going to, you have a huge amount of people getting in touch with you and you're doing such a, a fantastic thing for the family um, putting this together 
it, we're excited for you that you've that you've done this. That all the work and it's been since you've been a child, all this has come together. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It, it has been it has been a lot of work, but uh, you know, I I believe in it. I believe in in what what you know what I'm doing. I, you know, uh, you know, uh, meeting, uh, being able to communicate with people like mm -hmm. yourself or with Elizabeth. You know, it's part of the part of the fun of the the adventure. You know, um, that's a big adventure. And... <laughs> uh, that is and that's an amazing adventure. What you're doing. I mean, so do you see? I know you're doing this series. Do you have any idea, like how many, how much of a series this is going to be, or is this just kind of you're not sure yet? I mean, you're you're creating it, and we don't know when you're actually going to have it out there. You don't have a, a date for it yet, do you? I I don't. Um, okay. We are we are we are in the process of developing a new production partner, okay. um, who will work with us to to uh, get that next phase going. Yeah, it takes time. Um, right. It does, and it's been it's been a little slow, um, and sometimes um, uh, it's. A challenge to to stay patient. <laughs> I don't think I'm naturally a patient person. <laughs> it's very tough, but you're doing a great job. I mean, you know, believe it or not, I mean, I know actually another fam one of your family members. So I'm I've been friends of um, Rita McNutt, who I think, oh yeah. So she's a very good friend of mine. Who Maria. Uh, she's yeah. a very good, you know, so you got Rita, you got Maria, right? So yep. of course that I met him when he came to my farm. He came to my farm many, many years ago. He came for the barn wood because Rita got a hold of me. She's like, can you, can, can we have some barn wood? Oh, my brother? Yes, your brother. <laughs> you see, okay. your, I met your brother long ago. I met, I've known oh, them cool. a long time. And, you know, what I a coincidence! I would have never feel like it's it, it like it I, is um, meant to be revolutionary, <laughs> Bucks County. I feel like that's how what, like how we all knew each other then. And I, like, I know, just never expected nice. that one day that I would be talking to his brother, who is a pr producer involved in this business. I never would have expected that. I think I think the Doan story has that effect uh, somehow in the world. I, I believe it does, yeah. And and Rita has no idea that I'm talking to you about. And you know, <laughs> she, she'll get the po actually. I'm going to send the podcast over to Maria, and Maria's like, she's going to be like, what? <laughs> she's going to send it over to. Maria. <laughs> she's well, like, you know, I can't you know wait. What Martha I... did. <laughs> so no, I can't, can't wait I can't. to share. Oh, I know. Once this is all, you know, I have to do the editing and, and the mixing and everything, and and put the the sound clips in, and then you'll have a YouTube. So once it's all done, then you know Mark can send it off to other people. You know Melissa, you can do it, and we'll just send it off. And it's gonna get. I'll promote it. Um, you know I'm not gonna. I'm going to credit you, Mark. That you know because these photos that you sent me, I'll credit you and Melissa. That this are from you. This is from your production. From the um, pre yep. Oh, so Mark will know how to sort of speak to that as far as the credits go on the yeah. photos. Yeah, so I want to make sure that you're both credited because, you know, you're part of all this. And I wanted to make sure, like, even, like, the sound clip that I'm... I'm going to take the sound clip from your YouTube that you have on that trailer. And I'll put that clip as in the beginning. So that'll all be credited that, you know, that's yours. And then you can take all of that and, and we'll, we'll get it out there. And I'll promote it. Um, the promotion will probably hit seventy to hundred thousand people. Oh, wow! And oh, people can follow our Facebook. They page. will follow um, like all if, those links. All of it will be in the podcast, and it goes from that podcast. It's on thirty different platforms, but then the in the YouTube podcast because people don't have always streaming subscriptions, so they can listen to there. But they have all those links. They'll have it to your Facebook, to your web page, to everything that you're connected to. They'll have that information, so you may get flooded with some more information. You might get flooded with more people, just so you know. Great, I've so heard, great. Thank I've, you, Martha. I've heard that other businesses that I've done this to, they said it was a huge, huge boost and help to their business. And we want this to be a huge boost to what you're doing 
and making the Doan Gang, making the Revolutionary War come alive. They become alive again because of this. People, you know, because yeah. a lot of people don't understand it. Or they, maybe they don't care. You know, maybe the, the newer generations don't, but it is part of our history and people need to still keep that alive. They really do. And you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been a um, a labor of love. It really it really has been. Um, well, you have a supportive yeah. family to let you do all the work that you're doing. Well, they're either supportive or crazy. I don't know if they're crazier. <laughs> you're you not sure. That. I had to try to not laugh during that part when we were talking about that because I think it's the opposite for myself in my house, right? So it's always my husband that's like, "Okay, Melissa." And then, yeah, how does then, so? How you know, does your husband handle? Is your husband supportive of all this, Melissa? I mean, because um, you're doing oh, a little work too. Oh, my husband is very supportive of the Doan story. Oh, yes. that's great. That's great. Very. Okay, so, <laughs> so all all families are supportive of all what you do, and and then my family has to be supportive of what I do when I'm talking to all these individuals, and and I spend, I do like I have two interviews a day, and I'll spend all day editing, mixing, getting the audio trying to get it correct and using the right software to get it correct. Yesterday I found out that there's some things I didn't do and then the audio didn't come out like I wanted it to, but it's important to get that right. And then that you, is want, amazing. you want it to be authentic, but you also want to make sure that like my dog is barking in the background. We don't want to hear that. And I heard some things and when I'm talking to you, I hear toys. I think I heard a toy. Um, well, so <laughs> Oh, I didn't. I actually, I, it's not, I didn't hear anybody's background. And um, Martha, at some point, I'm probably, I wanted to, I'm going to contact you about maybe um, if you offer this as a service, I'm sure. not sure, but um, purchasing some sort of personal instructions on some of these technologies so that we can sort of use it for oh, American sure. yeah. outlaws and, yeah. and different things like that. So um, no problem. I can help you with anything. Like I am a, a tech geek and I, I really am into all the technology and I love you are good. doing it. You are so <laughs> good. I have kept up with, you know, some, but my goodness, it gets crazy. It does. It does. I mean, you guys, I mean, especially I lost my business over this pandemic and I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. So I'm like, well, you know what? I want to help other people because they all lost their businesses too. So uh, let me get out there and I'll start talking. I miss talking to all the people. So I was like, well, let me talk to all these individuals, these businesses. And, and that's when I started diving into the Instagram and finding people on Facebook and businesses. And, and that's when I, you know, found you. And I, you know, I had such an interest in this. Don't, when I came here to Bucks County and that sign is right down the road from where I live, that's like, what's the Dome Gang? Wait a minute. And I started researching it. And then I found out that there is a hidden grave and a in the farm field, the farmer's property, the one that's not, it's not even marked. That one I'm going to investigate. You're talking about the Moses, the Moses, yeah, yeah okay. the, um, the story is that that grave marker mm -hmm. was placed there by Henry Mercer, who was the guy oh. who founded the, Mer the Mercer yeah. Museum. Yeah, the Mercer Museum. And Henry, he was one of the first sort of Doan scholars ever. And when he was either in college or university, one of the first sort of papers he did was on the Doan Gang. Uh, and then later, when he starts his career, he continues the fascination. That that head, that stone was part of um of um uh, there was a home in Doylestown that was either being demolished or something, and that mm -hmm. was sort of the stepstone for the porch. Oh. So he took it and had it engraved with the Moses Doan. Uh, you know, here lies you know the sort of the the, the, the body. And he put it in the field where like, there, there must have been some other marker or something before. Must have been. And he put it there. But then years later, the story is that the farmer who owned the property mm -hmm. or the, whoever owned it, you know, wanted to till the field. So he just took the headstone and just kind of chucked it into the woods. So oh. nobody really knows where his, they don't his, really his know body where he is, really is. Yeah, nobody really knows. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I mean, it's... And, and of course, as Melissa knows, there's all, you know other stories about what did happen to him. Some people believe he committed suicide. He escaped from the shootout at Halsey's cabin, and instead mm -hmm. of surrendering, rode, rode his horse off off the cliffs above the Delaware River. And there's um, a lot of those. 
Yeah. And mm-hmm. in some stories, he you know he makes it to Canada and then mm-hmm. goes to England and sort of lives in England. So. Oh wow! There's, there's so a many, ton it's, of stories. It's such a great. Story. I know it's it's really it's so great, and the more you sort of one of the things that I have been really surprised through this process mm. is you know I had done a ton of research back in the day, and I thought I was like Mr. Doan Gang, and it turns out, man, I, there was so much I did not know. I have learned so much more in the last few years. It's really, um, it's really amazing, and I can't um, imagine everything you've learned, and you keep learning and, more and more. Of, yeah, of, all the time, and, and, and Melissa has been so great with, I'm sorry, Elizabeth has been great with sending... Um, oh, no, that's okay, that's okay. I always go by Melissa Elizabeth, so I, it's always like... <laughs> so, um, wait, wait, you're, are you a Melissa or are you an Elizabeth? <laughs> um, no, because uh, Melissa, Melissa Elizabeth, but I always, for short, Melissa, but um, people have... Uh, I, I have friends that mm-hmm. go by either, and I kind of always... I'm a, I, I love both names. So oh, good, because, so, yeah, yeah, I'm the same way, so I'm a Martha, so you're a Melissa Elizabeth, I'm a Martha Elizabeth, so, yeah, I go with both, too. <laughs> so, I, I, I got my Melissa's and Martha's and Elizabeth's mixed up. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I mean, I know you, yeah, I was just, I just mentioned that because if people do see me on Facebook, they will see me as Melissa Elizabeth, <laughs> it's true, so, um, yeah, but, um, Oh goodness, Martha, you were you were saying. Oh, oh, so I'm sorry. Um, so yeah. Um, what we were saying, and that what we were saying about, we were talking about our <laughs> talking about the Elizabeth. Um, Mark got us uh, off track there with the the whole Elizabeth thing. Um, so yeah, that the whole thing about this, you know, the the graveyard really that grave really fascinated me. The the whole Don sang that the Don sign, that just just triggered me to start researching and that's all I did when I came here and started reading and reading and finding out more about them and you no know, and I trail I go trail hiking all over so I'm all over Ralph Stover State Park and it's fascinating like you know something just draws me to the river and it draws me to the park and it did before I even knew about that sign but once I found you- out about it it's that is uh, no go ahead and I'm gonna tell you what something very interesting about that area Oh, no, yeah, so I am, like, I've always liked discovering new things, and, and now that I know, like, you know, the cave, you know, there's just this, this very mystery, mystery thing about going along the river, and I don't, I just don't know what it is, it's always attracted me to it, and now I think I know why, it's because, you know, there's cowboys, there's outlaws, and they've always fascinated me, the stories. Because I'm a, you know, I'm a farm girl, you know, I was raised on a farm and then we'd had 18,000 chickens and then I had all the 30 horses on the farm and, you know, we rode and we rode and it's just, it's, it's bred in me, you know, you just can't take the girl out of the country. I mean, you can, but I'm always, I'm farm blood and, you know, we are hardworking people and I just, something just gives me this fascination I, I love the story about the Dones. And so, and then Ralph Stover, I don't know what it is about Ralph Stover, but you can maybe fill me in about Ralph Stover because you've got so, something. Well, the, it's just that the interesting thing, and it's funny because I know this is, uh, we're getting close to Halloween and everything. Um, and it's probably good for that topic, but it's just that uh, the, the Dones definitely have a history in that area, what is now um, Ralph Stover Park. And, you know, it's, really all over Bucks County, but, um, you know, Ralph, Stover, obviously Ralph Stover Park, you know, people know it for the Stover family and mm-hmm. Stover's Mill and, and everything, just what was turned into the, the state park and, and, but the, anyway, um, so I've always been really fascinated by that particular mm-hmm. and drawn that particular area and land too. And then of course, you know, people are interested in the, you know, the caves there and, and yeah. things like that. But the, the, the thing cliffs. is, um, the cliffs and one of the things, yeah, exactly. Um, so it's all over there in that general area. Um, it just really does pull people in. And the interesting thing about it is that um, <laughs> it's like, you know, this is one of those things that people may believe or not believe. But mm-hmm. um, sometimes if you're listening to a radio near there or your cell phone, just classically that area has always been um, bad for uh, signals. So oh, when you're always. In park, I, oh, my gosh. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure some people could uh, uh, 
theorize, you know, some paranormal stories surrounding that area. But a lot of people say it draws them in. And, um, and it does have that effect of the strange uh, effect on your cell phone and radio. And yeah, whether bring Halloween magnet- into it. Bring the eerie... Yeah. Yes, bring all if that into it. there's magnetic rock. <laughs> yeah, and like when you think about like Moses Stone kind of hiding out in that area and everything. It's just, I don't know, it's always drawn me in this vault. So I just wanted to tell you you're not the only one. <laughs> I was wondering about that because it is. It's a very strange area and you're drawn into it. And I don't, I just don't know what it is. There was something that I read, like I've been doing a lot of reading on it. And there was one section where... Here's the one thing it says, the more you learn about the Dones and their exploits, the more you will be prepared for that moment when you're walking through the woods on Jericho Mountain or in Northampton Township or the hillside of Center Bridge, you will hear the ghostly sound of approaching horses in the darkness. (laughs) Don't panic and run because you may accidentally stumble into one of the lost caves frequented by the Dones. So that kind of like, if you tie that in... It gives you an eerie, <laughs> eerie sense. Like, yeah, there, there is something there, and you know, it's very, very strong. There's a spirit. Well, I, there's a spirit about the story for sure. I, I was watching. I, someone sent something. Parent, my parents sent something to me. It was a newsletter from like the county clerk's office, mentioning an episode of a, the, the, uh, the travel channel show, The Dead Files. The where, de- what does that sound? What is it? No, I did watch the episode. I did watch the episode. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I heard about what that dead file. I heard about that. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a woman who um, claims to be uh, a medium, and she works with a New York uh, retired New York City uh, homicide detective. He mm-hmm. takes the scientific, you know, uh, approach, and she does more of the sort of the spiritual approach. But in this episode, there in Newtown, um, the they, they, um, the medium believes that um, Moses Doan might be haunting their house. Oh! And she refers to him as the dark art man. Exactly. Oh well, gosh. that part was quite interesting. Well, let me tell you also in that episode. It was very interesting that they identified the house as an old Twining family house, and the Twinings are the Doans. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's the same family. Going back to the start of this country. So. Oh, no. I have to go watch this now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that was very in- that was interesting. Do I do I necessarily agree with all the conclusions they mm-hmm. came to? Mm-hmm. Would the Dones haunt the twining twining house? When this is, I don't. I can't say. I can't really speak to that. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you, it is definitely an interesting take, and they definitely mm-hmm. did a good job of um, noting some of the true local history as well. Oh, the like Twining Bridge oh, Road in oh New my... Newtown. Yeah, yeah. The Twinings were Quakers. The Dones were Quakers. The Twinings are the Dones. They're this, you know, they're so intertwined that it's almost like. Oh, that's so fascinating. Yeah, but that's Twining Twining Bridge Road right there. Yeah. Um, and all those properties, like mu- much of that property by Jericho Mountain, was Dones Twining, and yeah, on this on this show, they were saying that this one old particular house um, was haunted by the Dones and used to be a Twining oh, house. My gosh. Amazing. You know what I'm going to be watching tonight? Then I'm going to be telling Halloween stories over the weekend, and I'm going to tie in the Dones. I can. I'm going to tie in Mark. This is all. This is all Mark's fault. <laughs> well, the other one, you know, I interviewed um, uh, a lady with the Plumstead um, Friends uh, Meeting House. Oh, did where the the, the, the yeah, I did um, Beth Taylor. Um, and of course, that's where Levi and Abraham mm-hmm. are supposed to be buried. Although I've heard from some people that maybe their bodies aren't actually there. I, you know, who they knows? just have but, the stones there that are outside yeah, no, I, the, the fence. Yep, that's one of the rumors that it's just the headstones and the bodies aren't actually there. But you won't know unless you, you try well, to pick I them up. Well, I hope nobody but is trying. Not, to, they're not going to. Hopefully, they haven't done that, no, or maybe somebody has. No. I mean. Oh, no, no. I, yeah, I, it would be not in very good taste. No, but wouldn't. there's a house next door to there that's supposed to be an older home. And yes, there uh, is. people who have lived there say that they think maybe the ghost of Abraham or Levi haunts that place and said that they've seen people in I shadows. I doubt it. I would not doubt it. This area, I think, is actually haunted. Because from the day when I moved here, there's nothing been but excitement. I mean, I didn't have excitement at the farm other than farm work. But when I moved here, 
there's a lot of things going on here. I mean, there was like missing, you know, what was it, convicts? They had helicopters flying over. I'm like, wait a minute. There's always been some kind of ruckus here in Plumsteadville. Not in Doylestown, but here. I don't know what it is about Plumsteadville. And, then, and really? my favorite restaurant is the Gardenville. And I've, there's a ton of history at the Gardenville. Yes. It's this whole area is fascinating. I can't, I can't, I can't leave here. I love it. Oh, uh, if you can get inside that restaurant, that's honestly I've, there's a feel inside of that. I've restaurant been in there, sitting in there, and right? Something it's draws amazing. me. You know what? I didn't know. I looked at it. It's like, oh, it looks like an old revolutionary time place. It's an old place, and I didn't go in at first. And then someone, I, I didn't think it was any good, but someone said, no, you have to go in. It's the best food and it's the best food around. And I am not kidding. That food is the most spectacular food I've ever had. And at the Gardenville. Oh yeah, absolutely. And well, you know that the story that the Gardenville connected with the Dones. Is it is? I found that out too. <laughs> yeah, that's on. where one of the members of the posse, you know, was mm -hmm. in there drinking. And the story is that Halsey's son or the son, some, some right. you know, sort of squeal and said, "Hey, we Moses Don is our place," and they it was did. there that the posse then then got together That's and went happened. off to Halsey's cabin, yep. where there's a shootout where Major Kennedy is shot and killed. Mm -hmm. Although the the story is that you know the, the, the he was shot and the musket ball hit the door, mm -hmm. a shard of the wood, the wood, yeah, stuck right into him, and he. He bled died a few days later. He, yeah, he bled to death or something like that. He died a few days later, right? Yeah, um, and then Moses surrenders, supposedly, right? And, mm -hmm. and then Robert Gibson comes up and puts a musket ball through his heart. And that's how he died. That's, that's and there's story. rumors about Robert Gibson, too, mm -hmm. that Robert Gibson... There's two sort of theories on it. One, that Robert Gibson shows up late. And Moses Doan's already been captured, so there was a reward for the capture or killing. Huh. So Moses was already captured, so Robert Gibson wouldn't necessarily be able to cash in unless, uh, of course, he killed him. Oh my the other gosh, is goodness. there are rumors that Gibson may have kind of been part of the gang at some point. Hmm. And Gibson didn't want that word to get out, so sort of dead men tell no tale, so... Who knows? That's what I Gosh, love about this story. The There's story so many great yeah. keeps, going on, keeps going on and well, on. Well, it has it has so many different. Um... I don't want to say elements, but just like like you said, there's just so many branches off of it that are, you know, these are historically true. This is not like, you know, people have made up these. Obviously, there's a lot of legend and myths surrounding sure. the gang, but there are actual historic stories that just branch off as well that are, it's, and there, it, like you said, it does really truly go on. Yes, it does. Very cool. And I'm so, like I said, I'm happy that Mark is able to put this into a story, be told, and it's going to be out there for everyone to see. And, and we're so excited, Mark. I can't wait till it's Thank you. finished and out there for us to, to see. And uh, I, I, I just, I'm going to look for the day that I'm going to be watching you very closely. And... Uh, <laughs> And finding out when the release is going to be and where it's going to be. Um, well, I'll tell you what, as soon as we have some more news to share, we can, we, let's, let's do another Yeah, yeah, another let's call. do it. Let's do, um, we'll do uh, a couple series, two or three of these, um, and keep um, keep us posted. And then we can do another uh, broadcast here to keep everybody up to date and, and just go with it. I'd, be, I'd love to have you back on. I mean, I, I feel so privileged because from what I'm told, Melissa said that you never let anybody have an interview with you. So this is... No, this has been the first. This yeah. is an exclusive. Yep. This is a real exclusive for you um, to be on the podcast. And it's a Bucks County podcast. So it's for the local people. But I, I see that we have viewers all over the UK, Ireland, and France. So this is going to be heard over there. They're going to love it. Yeah, they're going to love oh, it. Oh, wait. Yeah, wait till they see the, you know, wait till they hear this. And I can see it's going to, the numbers are going to climb on this one. You know, I just have to tag everything properly. And once it gets out there, everything is on from YouTube to Instagram to, you know, including Facebook and, and all the other platforms. So, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be real good. And once I get everything done... I'm actually going to use one of the pictures as your cover art for the 
um, for your podcast. I think I'd like to take, if I have your permission, the main one that you sent me is it says America's Original Outlaws. That would be a great uh, cover art for this, if that's okay. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Okay. Um, I just want to tag stuff um, with my name and NV Media Communications, LLC. I'll send well, make, you a, yeah, I'll... make sure you email that information, because like I said, this won't be out till tonight anyway, so you have time. Make sure you send that information that has to be credited. So I will credit it on the actual picture of the cover art, so you know that can be there. Because my name, the, the Bucks County Bites will be on it, but your name will be there. I mean, Melissa, you, and whatever media communications has to be on there, just to make yeah, sure Yeah, feel free to legal. add me as a guest, like, but as far, as far as the pictures and the credit, the photo credit and everything, like Mark mm -hmm. said, and via, I'm sorry, and via media communications. Um, whereas I am just uh, assisting and, okay. um, and just, okay. I'm just happy to join as a guest. As a guest. And then I'll put Mark and the communication, the media people, just make sure I have the right information so I can put that. Because that'll go in the podcast, that will go in the YouTube, that will go on the cover art. So make sure everything is there. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. And, and just to sort of circle back to an earlier question with regard to Melissa. Melissa is pretty much acting as like director of communications for the okay. project right now she's mm -hmm. taking the lead on social media mm -hmm. and also taking the lead in setting up stuff like this which is great well we'll put her in there We're, as, i'm so uh, grateful yeah. um, well, martha it's been the coolest thing ever it is, you, it's you been know been i told you cool. <laughs> i know we've we've talked uh, quite a few times and it's been very cool to meet both of you and talk to you and real you know it's been a great journey um, to do this, I, it's it's been a ton, some time in making to get to this point. Between your schedule, you know, you're in the movie, you know, the movie producing, and you're you've got so much going on. And I don't even know how you found the time to even do this. So I'm happy that you're you're well, able to. Yeah, it was my pleasure. But you know, it's true that there's the stuff that you love doing is mm -hmm. when you're actually shooting and 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 doing stuff. But there's still there's so much behind the scenes work. I can't um, imagine. You know, um, so. Do but you it's do, been a, it's do been a real you pleasure. edit? Do you do the editing? I mean, I know you have a ton of equipment. So do you, who does all the editing of the actual, like all the movie pieces of what you're doing in this TV series? I mean, you've got all this material. Who does the editing of this? Do you? Well, I, I, I do some of it, but usually it's, it's um i'll do just like what i call like sort of the scissors work okay i have a I have a uh, a guy part of the team his name is a uh, hilarian banks mm -hmm. and he is um he's he's brilliant um and has a real good sensibility mm -hmm. when it comes to shooting so it's like sort of a a, a a group of talented folks that takes a team I try to do like all of my yeah yeah but we're spread out a little bit he's in texas oh my gosh uh, and then i have another guy in new york uh and then a couple other guys out in los angeles so we're a little spread all out over. so i guess yeah in that sense you know with you know with the, the pandemic you know we've been kind of used to mm -hmm. um working remotely with each other anyway yeah um but uh yeah so well we'll make sure that they get to hear this too make sure that they get a copy of it and once i get it to you i can either send you a sound clip of this or i'll just send you i mean you'll have the whole thing so it could be listened to Great. whether it's on spotify or iheart or amazon the big one is really amazon podcast now because they do a really good job they make it look good you know they've got all those links in there it looks nice and apple podcast okay but Tell you what, Amazon has beat them, and uh, Spotify is great. So you know, if you think of in Breaker, Breaker's not bad. Um, if you you think about Pandora, Pandora it takes you five or six months to get a podcast on. I'm not even bothering wow. with them anymore. They're the worst. Um, but everybody else has been fantastic. Google Podcasts, uh, Castbox, you know, at least 20, I think it's 25 platforms that it's on. And, but the top ones, Spotify, Amazon. For sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so everything gets done. You'll get copies, and uh, I will. You'll see it out there. 
everything should be good and live by tonight. Uh, like I said, email me that information so we can get everything correct and uh, make sure everything is legal that we're doing properly. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. All right. I thank thank you. you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate all the time that you took out today for this podcast of Bucks County Bites. Oh, thank my, you. I, our pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. Your interest. Wonderful, wonderful. Have an enjoyable weekend. Be safe and healthy. And I look forward to the next podcast with both of you. Me too. Me too. Me too. Great Friday. Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. Yep. You guys enjoy. Yeah. No, no have a nice weekend. don't haunt each other now out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. No. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Have a good one. Bye, Martha. See you. Bye, Mark. Bye, bye. See you soon. See you, ladies. Bye. Okay. Bye, bye. 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 Oh wow. Oh, I have just. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. It was fantastic to talk with Mark from America's Original Outlaws, and talk to Melissa, who is communication director, and she manages like all the social media. They're, those two are just fantastic people and they are making history come alive. They are making the Doan gang alive. You know, and they had the saying, dead, you'd never catch a Doan dead or alive. So, you know, and it's Halloween, it's the creepy month, it's the haunting month. I mean, to talk to somebody that's creating this um, TV series it's in production and it's going to be fantastic when it gets done um i am going to make sure that all this gets out there when it's on the podcast it's going to be on all the platforms it's going to have a youtube podcast and it's going to be available in all countries and you know the, the american revolutionary war you know to have this come alive again you know we're living in here in bucks county in the heart of like, George Washington State Park, the, the crossings, Plumsteadville, the Gardenville, in the Gardenville Inn. I mean, there's so much here. And living down from the graveyard of where the does are supposedly buried, it's got me, it's got me, my hair is standing up. <laughs> so it is um, a very strange occurrence that I actually met them um, through social media and I was able to come up with the ideas having them on this podcast and them agreeing to come on, especially since they've never been interviewed before. Um, so I, like I said, I'm happy. I feel privileged um, and exclusive here at Bucks County Bites for America's Original Outlaws. Again, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Melissa. And I will talk to you soon, very soon. Everybody have a fantastic Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe. Be healthy. And this is Bucks County Bites. Over and out. But stories untold. A desperate gamble. The fate of a nation in the balance. And an outlaw in possession of the greatest secret in American history.